Hello, this is Lynn Wilches from um, Love to Cross Stitch, and I also do a lot of um, peyote beading. And I'm going to do a peyote beading um, project, which is a tapestry. So, as you can see, I have 77 colors of beads that I'm going to use in this project. And I'm going to show you how to start when you have a huge um, peyote picture that you want to work on. So this is the 77 colors I'm going to be using. And at the last minute, I realized that I wanted to have a border to it. So my pattern, which is my own pattern, I did not add into the border. So I've decided that I'm going to combine 310 and 10, which are black, which is matted and um, shiny. So with those, um, I pulled my pattern. And so as you can see, rows, there are row two and three. So I have gone through the issue of um, putting this together. So all of these beads you see here is row one. And I am going to show you how I hook all of those together and then I'll start row three and show you how to actually begin your peyote stitch. I use this to pick up my beads out of the containers. And these containers are that I use are um, watercolor containers. And then I just pour my beads in there and anytime I need more, I put them in there. And I use this to take them out. Just as easy. So that's how that works. Um, so what I have done, and it looks like I have a couple, there's different size needles for beading and it's kind of up to you as to what size you want to use. I go between these and the three and a half inch. These are the ones that go for um, loop beading, loom beading, excuse me. And I don't do loom beading, but I love how well the stitches are. So I have some thread that I was using on another project and I actually use um, Nymo and I do like that. It, it works great. I also have um, a clip to help with my beads. So then I clip it, which I'm going to clip right about here. This one is a little bit bigger than the other one I was using, but it works just as good. I like the plastic on them right here. Uh, you can get smaller ones, and if you're going to do a lot of smaller projects, I would recommend that. So I'm going to show you how to get started with this. And since all of this is row one, I'm going to scoop this down so that you can watch me put this together a little bit better. Let's see. And as you can see, what I do on my my list is that I have how many beads per row I have here. So I do each row to make sure that I have an, the exact amount of beads in this row that I have in this row. I find that it's easier for me to do it this way when I have a big project because with all of these beads, I always tend to miss one or two and I have to keep going back to find out where it is. So this is the easiest way I found to do each of the rows. And because this project is so big, I can only do row two and three on here. I'll pause it and then I'll do row three and come back and show you how to hook that all together. But this row, this one is easy because and like I said, I was using, I decided to do a border. So I made sure that my border is going to have five black beads in the beginning and five black beads at the end. And when I get about four rows, I can go back up to the top and do th six rows of black to um, complete the top part of my uh, border. So all I have to do now is pick up every single one of these in order just pick them up and put them on my thread and that's going to take a little bit so here we go
And with dyslexia, which is what I do have, um, I find that if I don't do it in this order, I get lost and I have to go back and then I get frustrated. So I have been doing POD beating for um, about five years now and I really enjoy it. I have done several of Debbie Moffitt Hall's ornaments. And if you're brand new to POD, POD beading, I would recommend that you um, try some of her ornaments. And I just scattered some beads. So, I believe it goes like this. You want to try not to scatter like I just did because then you're going to have to backtrack on your pattern to find out what color goes next. So you just keep picking them up and you're going to run them all along. And I think you probably don't want to sit here and watch me. Put all these together. I just love the colors that this is and I'm hoping that it's going to come out the way I think it will. I tried really hard to get the colors and I checked the colors on my pattern to make sure that they were the colors I wanted and this is of my um, calico cat sitting on the fireplace. So a lot of these colors are from the fireplace type situation. So. And see, it goes really quick, the first row, because you're just putting each of these on. And this is the time when I do like to use my bigger needles over there. But I already have this needle um, threaded. So we are going to just keep going. And each of these I know are correct because I counted them before I started the next row. So, it just takes a little bit of time to get them all onto this. And I know the reason why I have five black and five, um, excuse me, the reason why I have the five black in the beginning and at the end is because I checked one of my other uh, tapestry beadings that has a border on it and I added and I counted it and there was um, it was three and two and then the top part of it is six rows of black so when I get to about the third or fourth well actually when I get to about the fifth row or so I will go back to the top of my beading project, which is this, and I will put on the six rows of black. And I will show you that part later. This is an ongoing project, so I will show you as I go um, how, how far I've gotten with it. And then you can kind of see how much fun it can be and how quick it can go but with me, it kind of depends because I'm also part of Quilts of Valor. I'm the leader of the group here, um, the Veterans Memorial Museum, Quilts of Valor group here in Chehalis, Washington. So um, I do keep busy with other things. And when I have time and when I really want to, I will sit for a half a day at times and just sit and bead because it's relaxing. And I can also listen to my um, audiobooks, which um, work really well for me. So I am going to, and as you can tell, it goes pretty quick when you're moving along. If I had my bigger needle, I would probably get more on and I wouldn't take quite so long. So I am going to now that you have the idea of what I'm doing, I am going to pause this and then I'm going to add the next row onto my, my table here. And the nice part is that row um, 
will take half as long as it took for me to put this out. So I find that I tend to do, when I'm doing this, I do about three to four rows at a time. So, and I'm thinking that I will push my camera down a little bit closer so when I get ready to do the third row, you'll get a better idea of what I'm doing. So, right now, I have this rope. And I'm going to add the rest of these, and I will be back. So, hold on. Okay, now row three is ready. So, I am at this point with rows one and two. Okay, and there's the black that I was telling you about that I want to do for the border. And I couldn't remember if it was um, two or three to begin with. I'm thinking it's three and then two at the end. So, we're going to find that part out. It's not a big deal because it's just the border. All right, so I'm going to take my black. This is the bead that I'm using for the next step. So this is now I'm working on the third row. So I'm skipping that first bead and I'm going to go on into the second bead. Okay, the second bead. See? And the first bead disappeared. <laughs> there it is right there. So see, it should look like this when you've got your needle and that on there. So then you're gonna pull it through and you don't wanna get it too tight on this one because you want to be able to have room as you're going. I found that if I get too tight, then um, my row gets tight and I have to loosen it up. All right, so what we're gonna do, oh, I'm sorry. Um, so what we're gonna do, this is what it looks like right now. We wanna straighten this bead right here and we're going to move it around a little bit and we're going to keep moving it because we want it on top of just like that so you want to make it like a little T once you've got that that's your end piece and to be totally honest with you I'm not sure if this is an even or an odd number of beads I'll find that out on about the well third or fourth row so I'm going to take my next bead, which is a black, because I'm still working on the border. And I'm going to skip the next bead and go into the other bead. Okay, so we're going to skip that bead. See, I've skipped it. And now I'm going to hold it and pull my thread through. Oh no, and I just messed up some of my order of my row which I will fix in a little bit. But anyway, because I'm showing you this, um, I've got my threads in the way. So each time you add a bead, okay, come on, behave. Oops, sorry, I keep getting out of that. I need to know where to place this. So each time you add, it's going to look like this. It's going to look like you've got an up, what we call an up bead, a down bead, and an up bead. So you're going to continue to do that. So you're going to do every other, and this one is three black because there's a black there and I want a black on top of it. So I went to the next color, scoot that over, and I'm going to pull this three. I'm left-handed, but you can do this just as easily right-handed. Same thing, just coming from the other direction. You still have your beads in the same order. So, and I want to make sure that my bead is going on top of the other bead, like that. So now I'm going to start on my row, my actual row, and I'm going to take this bead, and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to skip that bead, and I'm going to go under this bead. Whoops, excuse me do that again right there okay now all right so I'm going to straighten this out and every once in a while they want to get mad at you but 
There you go. So you're going to look like that. And your whole row is going to look like this. This is going to be your third row. So I'm going to take another bead. And I'm going to do this. And we keep skipping the other one. And then keep hoping I don't mess up my rows. And so far I haven't messed them up real bad. So we're good. Okay, so. And you want to pull them and you want to make sure that that bead will go where it needs to go. Just like that. So see, if you're working from the, if you're working from the right side, then you would be doing it this way, okay? So you would be coming from this angle. Oh, come on. It doesn't want to lay there. All right. So right-handed. Here, I'm going to try it right-handed so that you can see both ways. And good luck with that because I am a lefty and very rarely do I do anything right-handed other than knitting and crocheting. So if I can do this for you, that would be awesome. Okay, so I'm going to skip that bead and I'm going to go to the next bead where my thumb is. Come on, Lynn. <laughs> hey, there we go. All right, so you do it that way. And then you're going to pull. And I like to keep my fingers on my stuff as I pull. Okay. Sorry. And I keep moving out of your range. So you want to make sure that you're pulling both of your threads. It's going to curl and it's going to get um, wacky, which is fine. It's not anything to panic over. Um, and I wouldn't worry too much about it. Because as you go, you are going to strengthen it out. It's going to straighten out itself over the rows. And I will show you that um, in the next video, how that works. But right now, um, I just wanted to show you how this works. And I did mess up my row, my second part of my row, so I'm going to have to work on that. So anyway, you're going to do this all the way. And sometimes you have to pull on both threads to get them to cooperate. So there you go. See, it's going to look like that. And it's going to keep curling on you. And the reason why I like this much length between is the more that you add, sometimes it tightens this part up. And then um, you have to let some of your thread out at your, um, uh, some of the thread out at this end, see? And I don't like to do that because I like to keep enough so that I have enough to um, finish off my work on that end. And I usually like to keep that tail there for at least four rows, and then I may go back and put it in and in this particular case, I am going to um, actually probably bead some black ones in. And I will show you how I change threads in the next video as well. But um, I'm going to pause it here so I can fix my, my things. And I will show you how this looks at the end. So um, give me a minute and I'll be back. Okay, so now I'm back. And I've got this much done. And see how curly Q and everything it is, which is fine. It will straighten that out as we go. And as you can see, I don't have any extra thread that I can work with. Plus, I wasn't smart enough to give myself a lot of um, thread left over. But I am going to move it about an inch over and hopefully I can finish this without too much trouble or um, because I want that extra thread that's at the end. So as I'm finishing this row, you see, you kind of need to be careful too because sometimes, which is what I just did a little bit ago, 
I'll go under two of these by accident. You only want to go under one of them. So I'm going to pick up some more beads and I'm going to just keep working and get to the end. And when I get to the end, then I'm going to have to close the video and um, start up the next video when I get the chance because I have already spent about three hours working on this. So, um, and you know, it, it's fun to do the peyote stitch. It's a lot of fun to do all of this. The hard part is getting all your beads set up and ready to go. And then um, taking the time to get the first oh, three rows, four rows done. Once you've gotten to that point, then it goes a lot quicker and it's a lot easier but it's just the initial start of peyote beading that um, has a way of taking a lot of time. And once I get moving, and I don't have to stop and think, and these things do get twisted around, so when you're going to do your next row, you've got to figure out which side um, that particular color is on. Like here, it kind of bleeds a little bit, so it's, and sometimes I don't really worry too much about that row because it's the first two. And once you've got, once you get it going, um, nobody's going to notice that first, first little setback unless it's a major color change, you know, that one's on top. And then you have a dark one and then you have the color that's on top on the next one so you just have to um just kind of keep an eye on that to see where the placement is but um this is really you know fun and easy once you get going and to me this is probably the longest part time wise is just the initial setup and starting um, most of my beads, all my beads are Delica beads, Delica 11s, and um, I or I generally order them from Aurora, Aurora Crystals or High Street Beading Company. Those two are really um, customer friendly. Fire Fire Mountain prices have gone up. And now they charge both tax and um, shipping. So living in the state of Washington, our taxes are high. And so um, I get charged quite a bit. Plus then I don't understand their shipping amount because I'm paying, I think the last time I did it, I paid like $15 for shipping. And I knew... From doing other stuff through eBay and things like that, that um, shipping can be cheaper. So I kind of quit doing that. Um, High Street Beating Company charges you what you what you end up having to pay shipping. She charges you exactly shipping. Um, and if I think um, on one or both of them, if you spend x amount of money then they will um give you free shipping so those are some of the benefits with that i tend to um go with either one of those two companies so i am going to pause this until i get to the end and then i will show you what i do at the end okay okay now i am down to my last few beads so I'm going to go ahead and add them in. And I noticed that I'm off. So I am going to have to um, check my pattern. And I may have to redo this, but at least you can get an idea how to do rows two and three. And then I will do another video when I have got this corrected and um, continue with row three. 
And sometimes that's what happens. I have a tendency to mess up on the first two rows, and once I get the first two rows, I'm fine. But I'm down to my last five beads that are black. So I am going to put three beads in. One, two, Maybe it's just two. No, it should be three. Yep, three. So this row is three, and then I believe the next row will be two. Okay. Three. And this is, this is an even row. Oh, it's two. Yep, I do two, and then I go back. So it's three in the beginning and two in the back end, and that's how that usually works with this um, border. And like I said, I found a little bit of a mistake on my counting, so I'm going to have to redo them all. Oh, wouldn't you know it, there's a bead right there. Okay. Let me backtrack. So sometimes when you make do what I do, then you just go back through and pull it through. And the other thing I realized is that I need more, um, excuse me, I need there it is. I knew there were two. So I am going to have to fuss with this. All right, I'll tell you what. So anyway, you get the idea of putting it all into a chain. This is the first two rows. Like I said, I have um, I will make a correction. And when I come back, I will have this part so that I can show you how to go to the next row. Um, unfortunately, it's been about three to four hours since I've worked on this. So I'm going to have to take a break and it may be a day or two before I get back to you. So, and I am going to do a longer thread and um, redo this. And then I will see you again on the next video. Thanks for watching. Okay, I am going to try to hook this video up with the next one instead of doing a second video. But if that doesn't work, then um, this will be the second video. So I'm Lynn Wilchis, and I'm also known as Love to Cross Stitch. Um, lately, beading is taking over some of my cross stitch. So in the last part, I was showing you how to come to the end and put the end in. So this is three rows at this point. You have three rows connected. So what I had to do, because I was explaining that I was off, I had to go back and I took each of my rows, which I consider these each rows, I took each row and I put them, so for row one and two, I did the first row and, I, and actually it was 38 beads. So I put 38 beads on my needle, then I put 11 beads on, 11, 10, 9, and I worked my way down to the end of 2 and 3. Then I went to row 3 to make sure that it lined up right. I went ahead and did the same thing. So I did 19 rows, then I put it on, 33 rows, then I put it on, etc. I normally will do a whole row and line them up on my board each row on my board and then I would pick them up and do the whole row uh, the whole piece of the row of like row eight or row three whatever so um, in this particular case I didn't want to have to do like I have done in the past where I had to take my rows two three uh, one two and three apart because it wasn't coming out evenly so I got it to come out evenly the second time I did it, which is awesome. So, and what 
I am finding out, um, so I've, I'm adding, remember I said I was adding a border. So it did turn out the way that I thought it would, where in the beginning I put on three black beads. On the end of the row I put two black beads. I'm going to do this for probably about six rows, and I'm going to continue on. When I have six rows, then I'm going to go back to the top, which in this case is down here. I'm going to I'm going to hook up and do my six rows of black. So I have my border. Um and I just need to remember each time I do a row that I have to add my black beads first. So in this case, that's what I'm going to do. Okay, so I should have 19, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 19. Okay, that bead needs to go elsewhere. All right, so I'm going to take my three black beads for my border, and I'm going to put it straight into the top of row three. And this is where you want to work on your tension. So... And sometimes you have to pull on both sides, both cords. So I'm going to do another. I need to do three of them. So I'm going to take the next one and I'm going to put it in here. Try not to catch the thread. It's a pain in the butt when you do that. So I usually hold it. So as you see, you wind up with two two and two but it's up so you have an up what we call an up bead a down bead an up bead here's a down bead so i'm going to put in an up bead between these two down beads because they're going to wind up being down beads okay and then i'm going to pull it through like that so you have it like this, okay? That is my, that's actually my border. And you can see it starts and stops right there, okay? So now I'm going to go into the row. I'm going to start row four with my beads. And I am going to try to get a picture at the very beginning of the project I'm working on because it's my project. Um, it is my picture and I worked it to where it had the colors I wanted that would look good. So, okay, so see, as you go, it's going to look like that. And you want to keep your tension pretty good. You don't want to pull too tight on your tension, and you don't want to be too loose on your tension. Because if you're not careful, and your tension is not the same each time, then you will have a wobbly edge where it'll go in or it'll go out um, depending upon which row you were too lax and which row you weren't. The other thing you need to pay attention to is your beads. And the more beading you do, the more you will notice that... Oh, Got tied up, didn't I? All right. What the heck? And sometimes that happens when you have this piece because you're always by accident grabbing it or going around it, and then you have an issue. And I have an issue right there. So I'm going to have to undo it so I can get this one out. Okay, and I took it off. Normally I will try to keep it on as long as I can, but when the threads get tangled up with each other, then it becomes a pain, and so you have an issue, and yeah, so it's no fun. All right, so I'm working on my tension as I'm going. Let me get each of these beads and put them on. And when I'm done with this, I'm going to quit the video um, and go ahead and post it. Later on, 
when I have more rows and when I get to the point where I'm going to add my border, I will show that and then I will um, try to come back and show a few more, you know, each step, so to speak, that I do on this um, because I'm sure that most people are curious as to what it is that I'm doing and how it's coming along. So I think I will probably do a video maybe um, after six, after the first six rows. I'll show you what I am, how I'm going to get up to my uh, border on the top. And then I will also um, show you how to finish your threads and put another thread on. So those are things that I will do when I get to those now, as you see, this row likes to twist. So you just kind of want to twist it in the direction that you want. You kind of want to pay attention to um, top and bottom colors. If they're the same, you don't have to worry about it. If they're different, you want to see what piece, what bead you're putting on. And if that uh, works with that top bead. Usually because it's the first first rows, nobody will notice if you're off, um, if you've accidentally put row three on, um, on the top and switched it with row one. So, um, but I try to pay attention to that part as I go. So getting close here and we will see if I can put my video together. And then I can show what I've done. And the more you use your thread, the more it will start to unravel a little bit. And there are, and if you're taking beads out because you made a mistake, that will also, um, and that's where these little hairy things come from, is because it's coming off your thread. So you need to be careful of that. So pay attention to your thread to see if it needs to be replaced. And then you can um, finish it off and start another one. And I had to take this out a little bit ago. So that's why I have the threads that I do. Okay, so I'm going to put this in. Now, as I was saying, you need to pay attention to your beads. Because not all, not all the beads are the exact same size. But when you pick up a bead, they should be pretty even, okay? And there are times that I have picked up, and sometimes I have one over here somewhere. I have picked up a bead that is too skinny. So it's like a, just a circle. Um not a fat circle, but a real thin circle, then you need to put that aside and stick it into your, I consider my waist um, tube. So I usually have a tube where beads that are too thick or too thin will be discarded into that. And I have quite a few of those actually in one of my bead tubes, which I don't have right now. That I could show you, but I will show you that uh, later when I do another video. Okay, here we go. And down to the last four beads. And then I'm going to get this set up for a video. Okay, so see how that's working? So the more you work your rows, the more it straightens out. See the difference? This is kind of twisted over here, and this is straightening out. It takes about five rows for this to completely straighten out. So don't get too excited that, oh crap, it's, it's bending on me or it's moving on me, because um, you don't have the strength of the beads just yet to um, do that. 
And some of these beads are really interesting colors, like that one I just went through. See this one? And it's got a little bit of black in it. So, And then the one below it has a little bit of white in it. It's like a two-toned um, color. And this one's like a greenish two-tone, which goes with... Okay, let me see. Do I want to turn that? Nope, I guess not. I'm going to put it through this one. And then I'm going to put this through there. So, I'm on row four. And as you can see, it's straightening out a little bit better. And I'm going to go ahead and work my row four, I believe. Oh, wow, there's like 30, 40, 60, 90, 127. 36. So there's about 150 beads to one row. That's going straight across. Okay. So, and when you have that many beads going that long, then sometimes um, you can get off, which I have done. And so this is a way, you know, if as a beginner to do each row in a row, so to speak, when you get a word map, this is the word map. So this would be, okay, here we go. This would be a row in a row. So that would be row four, and that's the row that I just did. And then you would line up the this row and that row. And a lot of times, like I said, and I showed you on the first part, I line them up in rows on here. And then I can just pick them up as I go. It takes time. Um, but to me, it's easier. I have a friend that puts piles. Let's see if I can show you. So she puts a pile here. And then there's a pile of these here. Oh, I'm too far up. Okay. So she has her piles. And I mean a lot of piles. Wrong color. And... And her piles are a lot bigger than these. And then she has the number written right up here, and the number written down here, and the number here. And then she will look at her word chart and go, okay, I need this one, and she'll put it on. And then next color is this one, and puts it on. Which is quicker, but I have dyslexia, and every time I do it her way, I have messed up. And then I have to go back and figure out which bead I missed. So at that point, I just decided that this way was easier. And it may be easier for some people. If not, you can do like she does. Just put a, a small pile of beads right here and right here. And then take those. Um, I don't have it right here. But there's little... Um, stickers that you can put there with a number on each one as you're going and you can line them up. I have 77 colors so if I line 77 colors on here it would pretty much take up most of my mat which is fine but like I said I always tend to make a mistake so it's just easier for me to do it this way and so I'm just giving you another option of how to do it. So like I said, I'm going to go ahead and finish this, um, finish about six rows. When I go to work on the black for the border on top, I will come back. And at that time, I will probably end up having to use another um, thread. And if my thread starts to go wacky on me, I may end up doing it sooner. And I will do a recording on that. So, like I said, these come in handy. There are smaller ones, and, you know, um, as you saw, sometimes they get twisted. The smaller ones are a little bit better because they're easier to untwist. So, anyway, 
I'm going to go ahead and leave you at this point. I hope this video helps you a little bit, if not a lot. And um, I'm hoping to add more to this video so that you can see more of how I do my peyote beading tapestries. Thank you for watching.